So I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of how to archive social media and other websites that might be relevant to your community. For this, you can use web archiving software. In this instance, I'm going to use Conifer web archiving software, but there are other types available. You can access Conifer via your internet web browser, and we'll put the web address at the end of this presentation. So here we have the login screen for Conifer. You have the option to create a new account or to log in with an existing account. It's a good idea to use an email address that everyone has access to and to make sure you share the password with other members of your group if more than one person is going to be using it. Once you have logged in, you'll come to the new capture dashboard. Capturing in this case means getting a copy of the website so that it can be archived in Conifer. On the new capture screen, the first information you'll need is the URL of the website you want to capture. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator, and this basically means the address of the web page. You can either type in the address or copy it from another browser. So in this case, I'll type in an example. So next, you need to create a collection to add the content to. So I'll create a collection and give it a name. So let's say we're dealing with a village called Market Langthwaite. So we'll call it the Market Langthwaite Community Archive Web Collection. Now you see here, you have the option to make it public to all. For the moment, we'll keep it private. And so all we have to do then is to press create. And you've come to the collection dashboard. You can then select the browser that you wish to use. It's simplest to stick to the one you're currently using. So for example, Chrome or Firefox. And you can also type in some notes about who did the capture and when. So for example, we'll say we're archiving the community archives toolkit on the 4th of January, 2022. And you can also put the name of the person in charge of the session. You can now press start capture to begin the session. So here you can see a version of the web page that you're hoping to capture. You can set it to capture automatically by using autopilot, or you can do it manually. The advantage of doing it manually is that although it takes a lot longer, you can select the information that you wish to uh, capture, which means it's much more relevant to what you're hoping to collect on your community archive. In the top left of the display, you will see a status for the capture and how much the website has been captured. So it will give you an idea of how big the final captured file will be. So once you've finished with the page you're on, you may wish to click on the links to related pages so that you can capture these too. And you can see the amount of data is increasing as the more is captured. If you wish to capture embedded video and audio, you'll also need to play those through as well so that the software will pick them up. So clicking links and videos can be time consuming, but capturing them means you can go back and look at the website as it was when it was live, rather than just having a snapshot of the information. So once you're ready to stop, click the top left button again to stop the capture. You can then go through the pages to make sure you have everything you need. So if we go back to our dashboard, we can see that the following pages have been captured. If you click on them, you'll see the captured version of the pages. 
So if you haven't clicked through to a linked page and you click on it in the archived version, you can notice that the captured version, you can't access the page. So this is why it's important to go through to as many uh, parts of the website as you need. The website capture has now been saved as a local file, which is different to the live website. The live website will update frequently. For example, when you go on the BBC News site, it updates hourly. But the version you have captured will stay frozen in time as an archived site. Bear in mind that sometimes videos or audio that have come from another site, such as YouTube, might not capture properly, as those companies don't often want their content to be copied elsewhere. The web pages you capture in a particular time are called a session, and you can add more than one session to your web pages collection. For example, you might want to capture what your local village website looks like every six months. You can download particular sessions for people to look at using the menu on the left. If you want someone else other than your group to look at the websites you have, you need to set your collection to public, which you can also do in the options here. So this has been a basic introduction to using Conifer web archiving software. There is a more extensive user manual available from Conifer's website, uh, which will allow you to do a lot more with your capture material. And you'll also have the availability of Conifer's community of users to help you with any inquiries. We shall leave the website addresses to these at the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.